Henry David Thoreau is credited with having said that the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation and die with their song still inside them. Is that how you would like to live your life? A life of despair where you bury your potential? Or would you like to live your life with creativity, meaning, and enthusiasm? It is as if we have this overbearing weight in our chest that communicates that something very important is just not right. This weight has the power to hobble us and prevent personal growth. I have observed patients describe this weight as intense boredom, the intense pain of loss or failure, the tension of irresolvable conflict, the anguish of inadequacy, the heavy darkness of aloneness, the despair of hopelessness, the restlessness of meaninglessness, and the angst of perpetual uncertainty. The source of this angst is what I label the existential burdens. These burdens are existential in that they are observed to be present in all humans. They are realities that are part of our essence. They are burdens in that they are a load we must carry, no matter how oppressive or worrisome. No one else can carry these burdens for you. Every moment of our lives is pregnant with the potential of an existential crisis, that moment when we become paralyzed by questions regarding our life. Does our life have any meaning, purpose, or value? We are, at some level, deep within our being, aware of this potential and the impact it could have. We do our best to keep a lid on it through distractions, actions, denial, and superstitions. We live in an age ripe with the potential for existential crisis, where that man of quiet desperation is not so quiet anymore. If we are to have any hope of living a full and meaningful life, we need to address the following existential issues. <clears throat> the burden of isolation, the burden of meaninglessness, the burden of responsibility, the burden of mortality, and the burden of spiritual emptiness. If we do not address these areas, we will be ensuring that we will be one of the people Thoreau describes as living a life of quiet desperation. Yes, we may have fleeting moments of elation, but are more likely to have seasons of despair as our distractions are discovered to be inadequate. These existential burdens are a powerful force. If left unaddressed, they can lead to despair, greed, bitterness, anger, depleted resilience, and a lost potential. If, on the other hand, these areas are acknowledged, accepted, and addressed properly, they can be a source of unbelievable energy, creativity, and spiritual awakening. If we desire to be the vibrant, creative humans that God intended, then we need a plan for dealing with these deeply troubling issues. In Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 7, we read, We work to feed our appetites. <clears throat> Meanwhile, our souls go hungry. Hour after hour, day after day, we work our fingers to the bone to feed our hunger, a hunger that never seems to be satisfied we end up exhausted and unfulfilled. We struggle to find meaning in who we are and what we do. We strive to find meaning and in the process lose contact with our value. What is wrong? Why is there a disconnect between purposeful action and an expected result? The existential burden of meaninglessness often causes the disconnect. Searching for meaning is a reality of human life. What it boils down to is the question, why are we here, or why do we exist? What will make my life worthwhile? We look for meaning in labels, badges, legends, fantasies, legacy, and heritage. We strive for labels that will give us increased meaning and hopefully value. Labels like officer, president, doctor, teacher, pastor, or your highness 
are assumed to bring with them an increased degree of worthwhileness. A label does not give you more value. A label brings with it a specific responsibility and expectation. If you are on the path to getting a label to increase your sensation of meaning, then you will find that when you get that label, it will be a disappointment. Along with the label, you will also find that all labels have qualifiers. Qualifiers that in reality are much more important than the label. So you may have gained the label of the president and the associated responsibilities. Now you have to focus on the qualifier because worse than not getting the label would be to get the label and the qualifier of being a bad president. You will have to work harder to be a good president than you did to get the label of the president. Labels may define certain roles in society and certain responsibilities, and with those responsibilities are degrees of meaning, but they do not provide any increased worth or value. Badges are those external announcements to society that we have arrived. Badges are symbols that are not necessarily backed by any reality. If you drive a certain car, you are seen as wealthy, even though it is an older car and it costs you everything you own. Badges are all around, from the clothes we wear to the car we drive, to the way we comb or don't comb our hair. Badges make a statement of meaning, but do not provide any increased worth or value. We look at legends to increase our worth. Legends are associations with others who we see as having greater worth. Associations with sports figures, celebrities, politicians, popular musicians, or people of power or wealth are seen as being able to increase our sense of worth and value. Even just knowing a little secret about these individuals can increase my perceived sense of worth. Unfortunately, our Legends have major issues with value and worth themselves, and they are not the people we thought they were. In the long run, association with an esteemed someone else will not bring you an increased sense of value. A very popular place to turn for an increased sense of meaning and value is fantasies. The world of fantasy is the field mastered by the media and the advertising industry. If I can make you believe a fantasy, I can sell you anything. We cling with all our might to the if-only statements in our mind as we struggle with a sense of meaninglessness. If only I had, well, you name it, a different house, a different job, a bigger bank account, a vacation home on the beach, a new motor home. Because it is out of reach, you are convinced it would bring you the sense of value you desire. If you do end up acquiring the fantasy, you will end up disappointed. The new car now has its first scratch. The new job has increased demands and expectations. The increased wealth does not bring the sense of security you had hoped. Fantasies are good for the economy and the sale of lottery tickets. They keep people buying, but they only bring disappointment. Another area where we attempt to cling to meaning and value is in the area of legacy. We try to hang on to past images of glory and success with the hope that the momentarily increased meaning will somehow last. But unfortunately, it does not last. Our trophies gather dust and our medals and plaques get stored in a box that we will never open. They are meaningless mementos of a distant past. Another area where we search for meaning is heritage. If I can find some ancestral hero, I will feel that I have greater worth. We search our family tree, we test our DNA, we cling to historical family trinkets with the hope that it will bring a greater sense of value. We search and search and then find that in every family tree there is good fruit and there is rotten fruit. Our precious trinkets become clutter that no one else wants. 
but we continue to reach to the past for a greater sense of worth in the present. Whether you are descendant of Joan of Arc or Attila the Hun, it does not matter. Your past heritage does not bring you greater or lesser worth today. We are weighed down by the sense that we have no value because who we are or what we do lacks the kind of meaning that makes us feel worthwhile. This is a heavy burden to bear. We either bear it or learn to deal with it. The first step in learning how to deal with this existential burden of meaninglessness is to acknowledge that it exists and that it is a problem. It is part of our daily lives to ascribe meaning. Determination of meaning is subjective. What I determine to have meaning may have no meaning to anyone else. Determination of meaning is also relative. What is meaningful to me today may have no meaning tomorrow. It all depends on the circumstances. If I am dying of thirst, a cup of water has more value than a bar of gold. Value and meaning are determined by what something represents. If you have two copper coins that each weigh the same, their value may be different because the image stamped on them is different. The value of each coin is the result of when and who minted the coins. Where we struggle is when it comes to determining our individual meaning and how that relates to our sense of value. Our desires run deep and are a driving force in our lives. We desire for what we sense is lacking, some affirmation that our lives are achieving something of lasting value. Yet our honest evaluation tells us that all we do is meaninglessness, meaningless, and will have no lasting value. We keep chasing shadows. What we believe will give our life value, uh, we reach for a future hope and in the process miss God's gifts that are available today. The struggle with meaning is ultimately a struggle for comfort and contentment with the belief that if I have meaning, then I will feel less discomfort and more contentment. We incorrectly assume that what we determine to be meaningful will give us an increased sense of value. There are three general categories of meaning that we can pursue. We can pursue false meaning, transitory meaning, or ultimate meaning. False meaning is the pursuit of immediate self-comfort and contentment. It is a type of endeavor that is often just a pleasant diversion and not helpful for long. Often, it is the pursuit of activities for immediate pleasure that are harmful. In the long run, the pursuit of food, drink, drugs, money, power, or any other activity considered immediately pleasurable is not connected to any form of lasting meaning. This type of meaning is very superficial. It is a distraction from the turmoil and troubles of life. It is a desperate attempt to cover the sensation and discomfort of feeling meaningless and worthless. Transitory meaning is the pursuit of long-term self-comfort and contentment. It is where the pursuit is not destructive, but neither does it give any lasting meaning or purpose. Developing skills, achieving success, receiving an education, pursuing healthy interests and habits may not cause harm. They do keep us busy and distracted, but do not provide any ultimate or lasting meaning. We falsely interpret the accolades received for accomplishment as attributing meaning and value. This positive sensation is fleeting. We devote all our time, energy, and emotion into achieving the most difficult of goals with the belief that the more out of reach an accomplishment is, the more it will give us a sense of value. Many people spend their life trying to achieve the impossible. And if they achieve it, they find they are disappointed because the achievement did not bring the desired result 
of a sense of lasting worth. In the end, this results in exhaustion and disappointment. Ultimate meaning is where the pursuit of comfort and contentment is on behalf of others. It is found through a relationship with something or someone greater than us. This ultimate meaning transcends the other issues of relationship, mortality, and free choice, and can put those other areas into a more realistic perspective. This ultimate type of meaning is experienced rarely because it requires what Soren Kierkegaard calls a leap of faith, which is an act of a believing in something whose existence or outcome cannot be proved. We end up wasting a lot of our life trying to fight or change what we cannot change. We struggle with the burning burden of meaninglessness because it is part of us. We all want to know that we have value and that who we are and what we do is not meaningless. We constantly compare and attribute different value and meaning throughout the day. It is expected that we would then evaluate and compare when it comes to ourselves, what we possess and the tasks we perform. It is very painful when we realize that our actions and accomplishments are meaningless with no value or purpose, because that is most often the reality. This deeply felt pain, this existential burden of meaninglessness drives us to deny reality and distract us through meaningless, distracting activities. We are now back to that life of quiet desperation. Our search for meaning and value is a search for some action, attribute, or quality that is within our control that could somehow lessen the pain and discomfort of isolation, minimize the terror of mortality, lessen the angst of free choice and spiritual emptiness. We live with the belief that there is something we can do or say that will give us our felt meaningless lives some sense of value. So we work hard to pursue positions, accomplishments, physical attributes, memberships in the best clubs, entertainment, or even personal sacrifice to give ourselves a value boost. All to no avail, we still end up feeling meaningless. Pursuing meaning and value seem to push it, push it further and further away. When we pour all our energies into achieving a self-defined meaningful result to feel worthwhile, we only make the problem of meaninglessness worse. Goals are important in life. They give our lives direction and purpose, but we have to be very careful when we overvalue results. Results are not always within our control. To focus on results leads to a life of disappointment becomes it, because it comes a life of constant comparison. There will always be others with better results. Even if you only compare yourself with yourself, your ability to achieve a specified result will eventually become more difficult, if not impossible, as you age. Focusing on results to give you a greater sense of worth is also discouraging because even if you achieve the desired result, you will find that it can never bring you the sensation of value you so desire. Another problem with pursuing results to give you a greater sense of value is that when you focus too intently on a result, you have sacrificed the value of today for an anticipated future occurrence. You lose track of the joys and creativity present today in the process. Joy is only available if a future result is achieved, and then that joy only lasts for a short period. In other words, to give meaning to a result, to attain a sense of value or worth, will only steal your joy and contentment, kill your creativity, and destroy your awareness of your true value your song remains unsung. Do not forget, the people you see as having meaning and value look back at you 
with their own feeling of meaninglessness, believing that through your meaningless activities, you have achieved a sense of worth. We all want to feel significant, that who we are and what we do has some value. The harder we try to attain comfort, the more discomfort we experience. Once we have accepted this burden for what it is, and that it is present in every human, we can get to the point where it can be appreciated. So how do we do this? How do we learn to appreciate the burden of meaninglessness? How can meaninglessness become a blessing? Firstly, we must realize there is a difference between meaning and value. What is the difference between meaning and value when it comes to how we see ourselves? Meaning is subjective, while value is objective. Meaning is a focus on what you do, and value is a focus on who you are. Meaning is direction focused. It focuses on where you are going, where value is determined by where you are in the present. Meaning is what you know and believe. Value is who you are. Meaning looks back to the past and forward to the future. Value looks to the present. Meaning is individual, where value is universal. Meaning fosters pride, where value fosters humility. Meaning rests on what I create, and value rests on the awareness that I have been created. Meaning promotes status or social position, where value promotes purpose. Meaning is data-based, where value is faith-based. Meaning focuses on observable gain, where value focuses on enrichment and life direction more than specific achievements. Once we realize that we all carry this burden and that no single individual act can bring us the meaning and value our soul longs for, then we can be free to not be pressured to find meaning where it cannot be found. When we place the demand for meaning on a specific action or quality, we only increase our discomfort. This knowledge can free us from attempting to diminish meaninglessness through accomplishments, status, physical attributes, acquaintances, memberships, knowledge, wisdom, sacrifice, spiritual endeavors, or notoriety. The increased sense of value from all these endeavors is weak and fleeting. You are now free to approach your life and activities in a way that can bring tangible peace and contentment. The burden of meaninglessness does not have to weaken you. It can make you stronger. So how can this be possible? How can the burden of meaninglessness strengthen you? Once the burden has been lessened by seeing it for what it is, you are free to use this reality as a strength and not a burden. No activity, accomplishment, or possession, no matter how meaningful you determine it to be, will give you the value or sense of worth you so desperately desire. So what are we to do? In Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 19 and 20, it has some good advice regarding uh, meaning and significance. It states, to enjoy your work and accept your lot in life, this is indeed a gift from God. God keeps such people so busy enjoying life that they take no time to brood over the past. What this verse is saying is that there is joy in today's work if we are willing to accept our lot or our current results. Think back to the example of the coins of various value because of the image on the coin. Like the coin, our value is not our substance. It is not our flesh and blood or what we are able to do with our flesh and blood. It is the image of the creator that is stamped on our soul. The value comes from the image. We have inherent value that is not based on who we are or what we do but on whose image we bear. An important element of the image of our creator is creativity. 
the existential burden of meaninglessness will steal, destroy, and kill our God-given creativity. That is the part of us that is valuable and meaningful and a gift of God to all mankind. You are worthwhile. You have a song to be sung. You and your song are a gift to all mankind. Do not throw this gift away, trying to achieve some superficial sense of meaning. Take time to evaluate where you determine your true sense of worth. If we focus our creative energies on the task before us today, and not the results of completing that task, we will free ourselves to experience joy and contentment without having to place a value judgment on the accomplished task. God's gift is the freedom and an ability to enjoy your work and the fruits of your work. The type of work you do is not as important as your freedom to apply your creative energies to enjoy the work. My grandfather was a great example of living this kind of blessed life. He was not a wealthy or educated man. He grew up in a Russian-speaking community in Canada. He only managed to get to third grade in school and had to teach himself how to read English. I had the privilege of building two homes with him when I was younger. I learned a lot from him by observing how he lived his life. He never saw a challenge as impossible or a task to be avoided. He did not gloat over the finished product. He just applied his creative self to every daily challenge. His simple but joy-filled life have had a positive impact on many people. His lasting legacy was how he lived his life. We will experience value, meaning, and contentment if we focus on the process and not the product, if we focus on our attitude and not our achievement, if we focus on creativity and not our creation, if we focus on opportunities and not trials. Take some time, find that place of solitude, and ask yourself the following questions. Be sure to write your answers to stay focused. To what are you looking to feel worthwhile? Where do you find your value? What does it mean to be creative? Do you give too much meaning to results? Have you found joy in your work? How do you approach your day? Have you found your song? Are you singing your song? What does it mean to be made in God's image? Once we are free from the belief that certain accomplishments will give us meaning, we can focus on what can give us joy, the creative process and the image. As a community, we will all be enriched if you are free to sing your song. For additional references and help, please contact the Fractured Resilience website and to be notified of future videos, subscribe to the Fractured Resilience YouTube channel. Thank you.